arena, Athens Epidauros Festival, could hardly have two more redolent uh, feelings of European uh, culture and history and art uh, in its name than yours. And it, to call it Athens and Epidaurus really uh, explains all your venues, because you have four venues, three ancient and one modern, um, and they are both in Epi Athens and a little bit south in, in Epidaurus. Um, I wanted to talk about that a, a little bit, if we could. Big theatre at Epidaurus, seating, well, getting on for 20,000 people, isn't it, um, is extraordinary. Yes. Um, and, and it was the, the, the home, I suppose, of the world's first great spa complex with hospitals and health spas and, uh, and uh, massage rooms and, and everything else. But also, of course, this extraordinary theatre dedicated to Apollo, the god of uh, sun and healing and of, uh, of music, and Dionysius, the god of, of catharsis and, and excess and lack of inhibitions. Um, that must really feel when you're directing in there that you are connecting with something very, very extraordinary. Thank you very much for this introduction. It's 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 really an extraordinary festival um, because it embraces such different venues. Um, um, as you said, uh, three of them are uh, of um, hi a historic value and a deep beauty, um, and and a, a very very special atmosphere. And the in Athens we have. Uh, the industrial complex at the center of Athens, Piraeus 260 in Piraeus Avenue, where we have four different theaters. And here, um, where I am now, we, we have the most, let's say, all the indoors, uh, more uh, um, 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 innovative um, performing arts, uh, not only performing arts, we also have uh, music. Um, but in Epidaurus, we have these two theaters, the, the large one, which uh, seats 10,000 people, the ancient theater of Epidaurus, which, as you said, um, is a sanctuary of Asclepios, the god of health, uh, and the little theater of Epidaurus, which is a 15-minute drive from the large one, which is near the port of the, the city of old Epidaurus, as we say it. And this is a smaller theater. It's very picturesque. It's situated near the sea and it seats a thousand people. Um, at the large theater, we usually have ancient Greek drama and comedy um, or plays that are inspired by ancient Greek myths and Roman also, not only Greek. Um, but sometimes we also have other events like uh, exclusive music um, evenings, musical evenings, or contemporary plays based or inspired by ancient Greek drama. At the Little Theater, we uh, inaugurated a new uh, cycle of events three years ago called Contemporary Ancients, uh, where we commission writers um, um, to write new authors, to write plays based on ancient Greek myths, um, uh, but you know, totally uh, fr free based on them, loosely based. Um, and we also host two or three um, musical concerts. But this cycle, uh, Contemporary Ancients, has been uh, extremely successful. We also have um, a special um, book series that we have published all of these plays, more than 12 at the moment, uh, and we also translate them into English, um, which we we feel that helps a lot in you know spreading the word for this new um, um, idea. Um, directing at the large theater um, is um, quite, let's say, is 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 quite an experience. Um, I am a director myself. I come from a theater family. So I have been um, born and raised with the myth of Epidaurus. My, my parents used to come back there every summer for more than 35 years. So I uh, we rented a little house and I stayed in the Xenia Hotel, which is now um, quite abandoned, unfortunately. And we stayed there like um, 50, 50 meters from the theater with the whole theater company. 
so I have very fond memories of, of the place in, in many different phases of my life. And now I have myself come back. Um, first of all, I came back as a director. I directed Alkestis with the National Theatre of Greece six years ago. And this year I come back with Hippolytos with the National Theatre of Greece again. So it's it's quite for me, I have a special bond with this theater. Yes. Um, it's it's a magical place to work in. Uh, all of the foreign directors, and not only the Greek, but all of our artists from abroad that come and work there ha have been, have had an experience, an unparalleled experience. Um, and I have to tell you, it's not only, you know, it's not only the landscape and the history you feel, but it's, it's something deeper. It's it's you know the energy of the place and the scale. Yeah, extraordinary. The scale yeah. is extraordinary. Um, I, I I have a special mem. Well, I have many special memories. I think I first went there in 1973, um, uh, and there was no tourists in those days at all. I think the two or three of us who went were the only people in there um, for 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 a day. Um, and ten years ago, in down in uh, the, the village of Epidaurus on the on the coast. Of the little theatre there, which had not really been restored ten years ago at all, it was still being um, excavated. Um, and I was doing a poetry and a drama project on the beach there, which was extraordinary. And ah. your predecessor very kindly then lent me for the morning your other venue in Athens, the Herodion, at the foot of the Acropolis. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, of course. Um, this is also a magical place. It's right under the Acropolis. Um, it's a Roman amphitheater. It seats 4,500 people. And there we host mostly musical events from operas to contemporary music, jazz, pop, contemporary Greek, uh, world music, um, all, all um, um, quality genres of music. Um, we have many, many, of course, visitors from abroad because you know this is a quite quite a place it's right under the acropolis many people you know visit the acropolis in the morning and then they see the theater and just you know come in whatever we have uh, we are pleased to welcome big orchestras from all over the world but also world class stars um and it's um it's also a magical experience for our audience this is the the biggest venue this was founded the, the festival started in 1955 so um in 2025 we celebrate 70 years of um continuing history continuous history but at, in athens as, as i said we also have the the, the contemporary buildings here in piraeus 260 these used to be old factories um, uh, now turned into theatres. And tell me your approach to how you've gone about programming the festival, because it it, it seems to have got more under adventurous under your leadership. <laughs> exactly. Well, um, I I was uh, appointed in sept September nineteen, and um, I was supposed to deliver uh, my first edition in June twenty twenty. Um, we we had planned initially um, a very big cycle of events, more than 70 uh, local and international productions. Um, but because of, you know, the pandemic, we managed to do only 17 and only local. Because, as you know, in the year 2020, nobody could travel, you know, nothing could be organized. Next year, in 2021, we managed to do more than 60 events, both local and international. We operated in all our theaters, bo both indoors and outdoors. Um, uh, and we extended the festival period until October so that we could fit everything. So this was a very special year as well. Uh, um, we we made plans and plan A, plan B, plan C. I don't remember how many times we changed our programming, but still it was you know a good thing we managed to do everything. And from um, I think from last year all our audiences came back. We had um, even um, a, a top a, a, a top five year record of uh, ticket sale. So every, everyone come back. We have more, more than 200,000 tickets every year. So it's quite quite a huge festival, as you can imagine. And it's it's a pleasure to say that, you know, every um, all the audiences have, have come back. And tell me something about your own artistic vision for it. 
Um, for me, the, the, the festival is quite special because the venues are so different to one another and because um, um, it attracts quite a different audience in each venue. There are people that go, let's say, uh, um, fanatically to Epidaurus, but have never visited Piraeus to 60 because they feel it's very experimental for them or they do not know, you know, these artists. And vice versa. There are people, mostly of the artistic industry and, and the press industry, uh, that are very, very often, nearly every evening in Piraeus to 60, they book 20 tickets so they see everything. But they feel that things that are happening, uh, for example, in the Odeon, are maybe uh, more, um, um, let's say, mainstream for their taste. So the big challenge for me was how to combine all these audiences, um, uh, keeping the high level of, of, the, of the festival, but even attracting even more. For example, we wanted to do work in order to attract even younger audiences, audiences in their 20s. This is why we created new cycles, for example, based on street dance, hip hop, things that had never been done in the festival before. Or we opened the Odeon of Herodes Atticus to um, figures of the uh, contemporary music, minimal music or film music or pop, even pop music uh, that had never played under the Odeon before, which was usually given to operas or or orchestras. And this way we introduced this monument and this part of the festival to other types of audiences. This is what we're trying to do. And the second thing that we're trying to do is to make Greek art known abroad. And this is why this year we are inaugurating GRAPE, the Greek Agora of Performance, which is, um, is a platform <clears throat> to show the Greek performing arts to programmers, um, um, international programmers, curators, and festival directors. So we have created two weeks in July, three to eight and 18 to the 22nd of July. And there we will present 14 new Greek productions of theater and dance. We also have other events, parties, discussions, dialogues, um, uh, meet the artist in person. And we are inviting, and we have, a huge number, it's crazy, because this is the first time we do this, this platform. Um, we have more than 70 uh, people coming from abroad in July, professionals, I mean, in order to meet the Greek community and to see, um, you know, a cond condensed version uh, of Greek uh, artistic expression. For me, this is one of our biggest, let's, let's say, risks. It's one of the big, one of the things I really want to leave behind, behind, behind me when I leave. Um, and uh, I'm surprised to tell you the truth that there has been such an enthusiasm already from people from all over the world, you know, and all continents, I have to say. And I'm really excited to invite everyone to Athens and Epidaurus this, this well, July. I was 18 when I completely was enchanted by Epidaurus and, and, and Athens and the Herodion, and the, Her the Odeon of Herodic Herodicus Attic Atticus, which is completely impossible to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I shan't try any longer. I have to say, rehearsing in that theatre in, in Athens in midday in August, the stage gets so hot that you yeah. really have to... Um, you have to dance across the stage and not stand still. Anyway, it's an extraordinary place. And I do really hope to come back some days. And I would encourage anybody who's watching to do so too. Thank you very much. We'll be we'll be very, very happy to welcome you in Greece. Thank you, Katerina. Thank you for this wonderful conversation. Mm -hmm.